turning my phone on silent, that kind of stuff. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Becca. Welcome to episode 93 of Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as Welford Pearls. We're going to jump in today because I don't want to forget to tell you this story. Um, I uh, was, so I, I dropped Nora off at preschool and then I obviously was driving home and I jumped in the car and I pulled out of the um, community center where her preschool is and then um, and there's this older very quite elderly gentleman and he was walking um, along the street and I had seen him at the rec center at the community center where Nora goes to preschool and he had sort of made it up onto the street and was walking and um, I kept noticing him because he was wearing this gray couch and sweater and it was um, like like this gray here on the um, um, on my uh, project bag and um, it was um, a raglan and it was very obviously um, hand knit like you could just tell it was hand knit and it had this red um, collar on it that was just exactly like on the couch and sweaters you know they've got the big shawl collar and then it zipped up to about here and then it had the the red shawl collar and then it had um, two stripes here on the of red and then on the back um, beneath the stripes there's like kind of a gap um, like down here um, and then uh, for those who are Canadian you'll know exactly what I'm talking about um he had the the I'm assuming it's his wife but I don't want to be sexist um, maybe he knit it um, um, there was a the outline in the red of the First Nations um, howling wolf it was such a cool sweater and I wanted to say something but of course now I was driving and he was walking and he was standing very like erect and he was walking very upright and he had a baseball hat on his it's pouring rain today um, but it was so cool um, it was just one of those sweaters where you just want to like jump out and be like where'd you get it who knit it for you <laughs> where'd you get the pattern from because um, that the wolf was like perfectly center and it was the the um, like the scruff and everything of the wolf it wasn't just the the face and it was a profile of the wolf it was just very and the wolf was howling it was just an awesome sweater <laughs> so um if you were the knitter <laughs> what's the i'd love to know what the pattern was for the back but it was just it was a very cool sweater um hi to hi to mary and kelly i'm just looking at the at the chat to see sort of who's here um, no, Mary, you didn't miss it. The show literally just started. I was a little bit delayed in getting back from um, dropping Nora off at preschool, so I had to talk to the teacher. Um, in today's show, it's going to be a little bit scattered because I didn't spend a lot of time prepping for today's show, but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Fibers West because that was a couple of weekends ago now, which is just crazy that it was two weeks ago. Um, hi, Krista. And um, I wanted to talk about... So I want to talk about Fibers West. Um, I have a, um, so I've got our giveaway fiber from March was the um, Smith & You Superwash BFL and I was supposed to draw the name today um, and announce a new giveaway for the month of April. None of that got done, so we'll do that next show. Um, and our printer was out of ink, so I had said like just hang on on the shipping and everything. And so I got everything all like sorted, put in the, new printer cartridge went to the paper to load it up because um, the kids keep taking the paper out of the um, um, tray well they've taken all of the paper so now we have no printer paper so I'm just gonna pick some up this week and I'll get stuff into the mail because I am sending out a, a control card um, and I've got the calendar from last month and I've also got um, the giveaway from um, a couple months ago so I just I have a whole bunch of stuff to mail it's all right here the shipping labels are done, the shipping's paid for, the, but and the packages are, it's all packaged. I just need to get paper to print the, this stuff to send it out. So that will be this week, because I want to get it done. Um, I will connect with the person. I, I'm going to do the draw, um, like who won this. I'm going to do it this week. I'll announce it next show, but I'll do it this week. And if you won, I'll send you a message on Ravelry. And now there's fluff everywhere. Um, and I'll get that in the mail at the same time. So I can mail all of those things out all at once. Uh, we also have the Patreon calendar to give away. This is a Patreon uh, draw that we do um, every month for our Patreon subscribers. It's a calendar that goes out. I don't know why mine is currently on December. Apparently it's December here. Um, we're actually in April. 
Um, so they're just inspirational photos of hand spun yarn each month and um, I will draw that this week along with whomever gets this and I'll pop that in the mail for um, our Patreon winner and I'll, I'll just announce it all next week but it will go out this week. So I'm just kind of getting some stuff organized and I just got um, sort of hit about a bit of a snafu um, because the kids stole all the paper. Um, I guess there are worse things, right? Um, there was something else I was going to mention. I keep mentioning about sharing the spinning resources that I found really helpful for spinning plant-based fibers. Um, so my flax issue of Ply Magazine just came. Um, so this will be a huge resource for people. There's also a Ply Magazine issue that was done for cotton um, and it I can't remember what month it was or when it came out but um, if you look in the archives on the Ply, on the Ply Magazine website it'll be there. Um, it's a, I guess I should hold this on the other side right because of the um, thing in the in the lower side here. Um, so the, the cotton issue has been a, a huge help. Um, the other two major resources that I use for plant-based fibers are actually right there so I'm gonna grab them. Um, you maybe wouldn't expect this to be a great uh, resource, but the um, Intentional Spinner has been a great um, resource because she actually goes through at the beginning of the book, um, see if you can see that, cellulose-based fibers, and she talks about um, processing and how some of this stuff is processed. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here's um, Gandhi spinning cotton. Um, in uh, 1942 and she talks a lot about that so this has been a resource just in terms of like differentiating the different um, plant-based fibers and some of the different um, sort of some of the, the compare and contrast between between cellulose based fibers and um, protein based fibers so that's been a um, resource and then the other resource has been um, the practical spinners guide to cotton flax and hemp and this actually was given to me by my friend Diana because of my interest in the bast fibers um, which is really kind of her and um, this has been a huge resource for me as well and if I'm not sure about something I just look it up in here so if you're really interested in getting into heavily into cotton or flax spinning um, I would highly recommend this book and it's published through interweave um, this one is as well so those are the resources that I had mentioned a couple of shows ago that I would talk about, the books that I have found really helpful for myself. And um, I hope that that's helpful for you if you're sort of wondering about some resources out there and wanting, wanting some more information. Um, yeah, people are agreeing in the, in the chat channel. Oh, Charlie. That, uh, yeah, Becca has a good point. So the spring issue for Ply Magazine are always the ones that have fiber types. So I think it was spring a year ago was cotton. I might be wrong about that. It might have been 2016, but I'm pretty sure. Anyways, it's one of the, the spring issues would have been cotton. Sorry, Charlie's at my feet and he keeps shifting around and I'm like, what are you doing? Because he, he uh, landed on my foot. Um, yeah, um, somebody else commented that, that um, they love this book and have found it really helpful. So that's great. That's two of us who are endorsing this book. Um, all right. I'm just going to check, make sure we're all, nobody's having problems. No, we're good. All right. So on today's show, um, I have some things to share with you from Fibers West and um, I was going to share a little bit about Fibers West and how that went. I worked the weekend in Katrina's booth. I was gonna try to get a bunch of um, um, footage of it, but it just um, the the weekend was just insane. It was so busy, um, so I didn't I didn't get any, but that's okay. Um, I have a new cast on to share with you and to talk about. I guess I should move my mouse, hey? And um, um, a couple of stash acquisition things, and. I want to talk about the item that's in the background here. Um, I will try to get to it. If we don't get to me like fully talking about it today, I will definitely talk about it next show. Um, I would like finish talking about it because I have a lot <coughs> to reflect on and I may or may not get it all said today. We may run out of time because I am cognizant of my time and your time. Um, 
And I have a spin that's in progress, but I may not talk about it today just because we've kind of got a lot to talk about. So um, let's just get on with the show and get into it. I also have, before we do, um, I also have a little bit of housekeeping for the end of the show, um, just about some stuff up and coming. Um, so we'll save that for the end of the show. about um, these festivals is that the it's an opportunity to see a lot of people that you don't otherwise see in your day-to-day -day life so um, it was just so neat um, there were quite a few people that came up and introduced themselves you could put a face to the name um, a voice to the name was really nice and um, um, it was just really awesome to like see people in in person where, when you otherwise wouldn't and I think that's one of the things about festivals that and retreats and workshops and stuff that all of us enjoy so much is that there's just so much um to share with one another and we don't necessarily see each other in like our daily or weekly lives um and of course on the podcast it's a very one-sided conversation right because I'm um you know interacting with you so the um the cool thing about about a festival like that is just being able to interact with everybody and see everybody and hear what everybody's been up to and there's quite a few vendors that come from um the Kootenays in British Columbia which is um um east of me by uh, you know it's it's like a you know a full day's drive um through the mountains and um I only get to see them when we're at the festivals and it's really awesome to catch up and hear how they're doing and how their kids are doing and all that kind of stuff. So I just really um, enjoy that and really, um, um, I always look forward to that aspect of festivals. I, I know all of you can definitely um, relate. So I did buy a couple things. I had gone planning not to buy anything. I had gone planning, um, uh, yeah, not to make any purchases, but there were a couple of things I saw on the first day and I went back on the Sunday and sort of um, sussed them out. So I did get um, a couple of project bags from my friend Monique. I've given her a couple of plugs on the show before. She is Frog Peak Creations right there. Um, she's from the Kootenays. And the reason why I bought this um, bag is because you can see down here on this, um, and I'll switch the cameras around. I'll switch them for you, Eve. Um, the uh, little bug vans on this just crack me up so much and there was another piece of fabric that she had that was blue and orange with the bug bands in profile instead of the front and I almost bought both I almost bought both but um, in the end I decided to uh, to just get the one and this is what she calls I think this is her sock size and actually right away I put my spindling project in so I have this I had talked about this on the show before I've got my my spindling project from Bastador um, wools from down in um, South America this is what the inside looks like it's bright orange isn't that fantastic so um, they're really well made they're just really fun bags and um, when I saw it I, I knew I wouldn't be leaving this one behind but then I saw a sweater size. It's huge. I can fit my whole head in it. It's massive. <laughs> um, I saw this fabric. And um, I just loved it. It's like, it reminds me of Wicked. Um, it's these like kind of witches with the crows, with the ravens very Edgar Allan Poe and she had a whole bunch of different fabrics that were um, um, like green on black um, and there was one there was this one that was purple on, on black which I kept coming back to and then there was one where the blue was the solid color um, and then there was one that was green and I was really torn but I kept coming back to this one so I was like you know what I just have to trust my my uh, intuition and go with what I want so um, Monique is, um, is based um, up in the Kootenays, like I said, um, there's a permanent coupon code um, for 
um, woolen spinning for the woolen spinning community for everybody. You don't have to be a patron or anything. Um, I think it's Welford Pearls. Let me double check because I don't want to say that there is and then I mislead you um, for her bags. Oh yeah, so it's a permanent, um, it's a permanent um, discount code, and it's capital wool, W O O L, the whole thing in capitals, fifteen. So if you want to take advantage of that, um, that would be really awesome. And uh, yeah, it was really, I, I was pleased to be able to support her too, because I've been wanting a sweater bag, sweater sized bag for a while. Um, I'm going to switch the cameras back, and you'll understand why in a sec after I do it. The other thing that I got, oh, that's weird. Can you guys still hear me? Can you guys let me know in the chat channel if you can still hear me? Because I'm not getting any signal from my camera, but my microphone is separate. <clears throat> yeah, you guys can still hear me. Oh, Charlie, you're right in the... Of course, Charlie's like right in the way. I mean, I'm just going to turn um, turn back on my uh, camera and see if we get we get somewhere. Oh, there we are. I don't know what just happened. That's so weird. It's never happened before. Um, may just be a bit finicky today. Um, so I went and saw my friend Lori of Disdero Ranch, and I've talked about Lori a ton on the show. Um, and she very kindly. This is just ridiculous. Do you know how much fiber is in here? She gave this to me. So um, I'm going to pull a couple of four ounce bumps off of this um, and we're going to, I'm going to give some of it away. Um, and um, this is a Romney mohair. It's another Romney mohair blend, except that this time it's 85.15 instead of 75.25. Um, this time I chose, she kind of gave me like the, the pick of the litter, if you will. Um, and... Um, I ended up choosing this. I was going to go with pure Romney and I was going to go and not, and not do the mohair again. But the the mohair gives it such a lovely, and you can see, let me switch my cameras back. Um, you can see that like the Heather Brown, um, it's, it's just so, so pretty. Um, whereas when it was just the Romney, it's just brown um, and quite dark brown. And I, I just thought like the, um, having that heathered, um, heathering of the mohair in there was just so so pretty and it's soft and it's springy and it's just it's so lovely um, so anyways I'm looking forward to um, getting into that I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure off I haven't measured this yet I'm not sure how many pounds it is um, it's definitely it's a it's quite a bit <laughs> um, so I'm going to measure off the amount that I'm going to do some sampling because you guys know me, um, and I'm going to figure out how much I need for a sweater, and then the rest of it I'm going to um, gift to you guys. So um, thank you to Lori. That was really, really kind of you, and um, I'm looking forward to sharing this with you guys because um, it's just beautiful, and I, it would be lovely to share the experience. And uh, Lori is actually going to be on the show on Wool and Spinning Radio um, in the coming months. So I hope that... Um, you guys look for or enjoy our conversation because um, she's quite lovely. She's just a wonderful person. So the last no, I bought two more things and then and then we're I don't usually talk about stash acquisition. I think this is the first time in like a long time. Um, so I hope you guys don't mind. But um, oh, Cindy, great question. So Cindy asked, how do you figure out how much you need for a finished project? So um, I need to pick a pattern for first um, and then I'll do some sampling and some spinning. I'll probably do, I usually do two samples, but because I've got so much fiber this time around, I might do three or four. I'll share them on the show and talk about my process and, and about the sampling process. Um, 
after I sample, I try to do samples that are big enough that give me enough to get accurate grist. And we've talked about grist on the show before, but basically it's the number of yards of yarn per pound that you can get from a pound of, of fiber. So I need to do my samples. Um, I try to make my samples at least um, 20 to 30 yards so that I can get accurate numbers on the grist. And then I'll measure out that amount of fiber that I, and I'll figure out how many, like if the sweater calls for 900 yards of yarn, or let's keep the numbers round, a thousand yards of yarn. Um, then I know that I need, to, and I've, I've got, you know, say I can spin, say my grist is a hundred yards per pound and I need a, sorry, is a thousand yards per pound and I need a thousand yards for the sweater, then I know that I need to spin a pound. Does that make sense? So um, that's not necessarily the case. It's just an example. Um, so in this case, um, I'll do a bunch of sampling. I'll share it on the show and then I'll start spinning and I'll measure that quantity of yarn out. I always add 10 to 15% in lieu of spinning because sometimes your spinning changes or it becomes more dense in places and you use more fiber um, and also for you know if I want to lengthen a sweater which I always do because my torso is so long um, all of that kind of stuff um, I tend to need more yarn sometimes um, thank you Kelly um, I have a blog post that I did a, a quite a while ago now and it's called grist um, it's kind of really important that blog post, I'll link to it below, um, is a great resource for figuring out some of this stuff. Um, yeah, so 20 to 30 yards, the reason um, that I do 20 to 30 yards is because then you're not measuring one or two yards of yarn for your grist. If it's one or two yards, to, for, for me, um, in the past, I haven't had accurate um, grist numbers in the end. So I, you know, I spun a yard or two calculated my grist and it came out at whatever and then when I spun my project I ended up short because I hadn't um, had enough yarn to get an actual real number um, and you want to get into it it's kind of like swatching for a sweater you want to get into a rhythm of like how you would spin your sweater spin and um, that's different from frantic you know stressed out sampling. Um, so you kind of want to be able to settle into the rhythm of what the spin would be like, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like knitting a swatch. Um, okay. So the last thing that I got was this Cormo fleece. It's a pound of raw fleece and I normally wouldn't have bought this. Um, it's from my friend Elizabeth. She got it from um, a farmer down in California. Um, and you know, I try to spin stuff local and I try to stick with British Columbia and Washington and, and Alberta, but, um, I just could not walk away from this. And, um, Elizabeth is a, is a good friend of mine. She's one of our patrons actually. And like, here, let me change my cameras. Every time I think about changing my cameras, I'm thinking of you, Eve. Um, and I say that with so much love because, um, I always forget. <laughs> I, I still forget that I can change my cameras around. So like, look at that. I'm going to spoke, I'm going to come right in. I'm going to move my cameras around a little bit. Uh, where am I in the middle here? Let's see if I can get this focused. Look at that crimp. You can see it back here. Look at that crimp. Isn't that incredible? Um, so I may have to trim the tips of this a little bit. It's very, very, very clean. Um, but the tips are a little bit dirty and I'm not sure I want to wash it um, lock by lock. I probably am going to band them and have a whole chunk of them and band them and then wash them that way. Um, Cormo can be quite lanolin-y, um, but it's just incredible. This was probably a partially jacketed fleece, um, Elizabeth figured, and um, it maybe just wasn't jacketed right at the end when the, when the fleece is fully grown um, because you can run into other problems by doing that. But it's just incredible, incredible. Um, this is the cut end back here. And um, yeah, it's, it's just awesome. And I couldn't walk away from it. Like for $60 Canadian, like, I mean, it's a full pound too. Like I can really do something like that with that. Um, and I don't know if I'll do a sweater with this, but because it's Cormo, but I definitely am thinking like a hap or a shawl or something in a big square one that would be sort of like a heritage, um, a um, heirloom. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to playing with this this summer and getting it washed up. And then I'll sort of work work on spinning it over the course of next winter. 
but it's just incredible. Um, what would be the decision making? Um, Mari, good question. Um, what would be the decision making to not spin it in the grease, given it's pretty clean? To be honest with you, I hadn't thought about spinning it in the grease. Um, I probably could, because I was thinking about combing it and hackling it and whatnot, because um, that would clean the tips um, um, even more, and then I wouldn't have to worry about getting them super super clean. Um, that's not a bad idea. I'll have to sample. <laughs> It all comes back to sampling. Anyway, so that's this. And I felt really lucky about having found it. Um, because it was pretty... Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing to find. Um, yeah, Polworth. Polworth and Corn. They're both very fine wools. It's a good point, Becca. Yeah. Um, it's clean of dirt, but it still have just as so much lanolin as not jacketed, right? Yes, that's right, Rebecca. So even if it's jacketed, you're still going to have lanolin. Um, and this, this particular fiber, because Elizabeth and I talked about it for quite a while, um, part of the problem with these fibers is um, they can be kind of sticky. So you think you've gotten them clean and then you start spinning them and they're still sticky. So um, Eliz um, Elizabeth was telling me that she tends to wash them twice and rinse them twice um, because they, they can be very um, sticky. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I'm not sure when I'll actually get to it. It's all very fine and well to say the summer, but the reality is um, it may not be it for a while. But regardless, I'll store it, and um, you guys will hear about it eventually. Um, yes, and I am very aware of, like, you know, a greasy wheel when you spin in the grease, and I'm not sure I kind of want to go there with my wheels. Um, I think that's everything I had to... Oh, no, one more thing. Um, this is also from my friend Elizabeth. Um, oh, so I keep calling her Elizabeth. It's Sarah Elizabeth, duh. Um, she makes these awesome bats. Um, she's from the Kootenays as well, same as Monique. Um, Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks. Some of you know her from the Slack channel. Um, anyways, I just couldn't resist one of her bats because she always has them there. and um, I can make my own bats, but... I love her colors and I, I really wanted to support her. So this is actually the one that I got. I'm just going to move my camera out. Don't need to be so zoomed anymore. No, no. What are you doing? There we go. I may have to put it on macro. So you know what? Let me change my, my uh, camera views. And... Uh, Yeah, um, it is. With the with the fine wools, they have a lot of lanolin in them. Um, this is a question from Mary. She's wondering if that's the way it is with all lanolin heavy breeds. It it, it is a it is a thing. Um, so this is my bat. Um, that I chose. So it's got browns and blues, and it made me think of the sky, and the mountains. It's got some sparkle in there, but not offensive sparkle like, um. I know I always have these conversations about like Angelina and Firestar with uh, Mari and Jess and uh, um, Katrina because we always tease Katrina about about her her not so she doesn't love glitter and sparkle and I just I just love it but this is perfect this is the perfect amount so I'm really I am really looking forward to getting into this and I think I'll probably spin this on my spindles this summer. I can't remember how much it weighs. It's 77 grams, so it's not um, it's not offensively huge, which is really lovely. So that is what I got at Fibers West. And um, I spun on my own wheel um, for the two days and did some demoing and whatnot, and um, that was really fun. Um, and that's the spin that we probably won't talk about today, but I'll share with you next time. I really want to talk about my knit and what I cast on, um, because this is old, old, old yarn. My dragonfly is still here. Thank you for some of you. Some of you made some kind comments on the YouTube channel about my dragonfly. It was quite funny. Um, I so appreciate those who uh, appreciated the uh, artwork and the ideas of how to get it off. So thank you so much. Um, all right. This is the escarpment cowl. Is that what it's called? Becca Mari escarpment. Um, it's a um, circular... Um, um, kerchief basically and it's a cowl um, but you start off knitting back and forth um, so you start off knitting back and forth up here and you build um, the rag the the raglan oh my gosh uh, this is not a sweater this is a shawl this is a cowl um, you start off 
by building your garter tab and building outward like you would a traditional triangular shawl. And as you build out, when you get to a certain distance across um, around here, so you want a certain, I, I can't remember what the measurement is, but um, when you get to the certain um, um, length, then you, you attach it um, and you knit in the round for the remainder. Um, so this is the back of the cowl and this is the front. So when you're wearing it, all you see is the, ink, the, the line this thing here um, that you would normally see on a triangular shawl and it's sort of marketed um, like she she writes in the Ravelry description that it's um, sort of really suited and, and um, it lends itself to a gradient and so Becca was the um, first one who knit this in the in the community and she shared it in the slack channel um, and it was beautiful and it was out of her hand spun and um, Becca is Bethy 40 for those of you who are wondering she's been on the radio show a few times some of you know her voice um, uh, she had had a photo of her wearing it and uh, pardon my um, forgetfulness today Becca I can't remember what color yours was was it green um, Anyways, I was really taken with it. Like I saw the photo and I was like, oh, <laughs> um, I don't generally like um, that cowls and shawls and stuff knit in the round, but um, because it's the gradient and I, I, I spun this yarn back in Spinzilla of 2015. Like I've had it in my stash for quite a long time. And I know for some that's not a long time. Like some of you have hand spun yarn in your stash for a lot longer. Um, but this was a yarn that I had spun that was, um, it was fiber that was dyed by Ancient Arts Yarns, based in Alberta. And I had picked up the fiber at a Eclectic Tree, which was a um, yarn shop in Kamloops that's now closed. And as, after I finished spinning it, because it was one of my first um, full spins, it was during that week of Spinzilla, I was just desperate to use it. Like I was just so excited to knit with it and nothing worked. So it got knit, re-knit, ripped back, frogged. Like it was just so horrible. Oh, that's right. It was the blue Targi from Katrina that Becca um, spun. It was just gorgeous. And um, as soon as Becca posted the photo of hers finished, I was like, oh, that's what I can do with my fiber with my ancient arts yarn that's been sitting in my stash forever <laughs> um, because it wasn't really a true gradient like it's not really it does go down to this sort of mauvey purpley color kind of um, like you can see in here there's like this like mauvey purple oh um, Eve I have to switch my cameras you just cracked me up um, it, there's like this mauvey purpley color in here and um and then and this kind of green the colorway is called she sells seashells so it's meant to be like at the beach um the inside of a shell um which um it's pretty accurate actually um it makes me think of the inside of the clam shells that you find at the beach that the seagulls drop um so but I didn't mean, like when I was spinning it, I didn't realize that it was a gradient. It was my own um, ignorance at the time of being, a, being a, a new spinner returning to spinning, if that makes sense. Um, so anyways, it moves from this sort of um, coral and then it goes a bit darker and now I'm moving into the green and that sort of gray, um, gray mauvey green. Um, I don't know how something can be green and purple at the same time, but it is in this yarn, so we just have to go with it. Because um, it's it's sort of this weird mix of all these gray, grayish reds and grayish greens and kind of gives it like a mauve, a mauve tinge. And um, in here in the yarn, there are some places where it actually really is like this mauvey gray purple. It's quite interesting. So anyways, um, my yarn um, is a... Um, I think the pattern calls for, is it DK, Katrina, Rebecca? I don't think Katrina's here today, but Rebecca or Mari or uh, Becca, I don't, you guys, do you have access to the pattern right now? So we're all knitting it. <laughs> so I threw out in the Slack channel, maybe you guys want to do um, like a knit along and we'll kind of work through it together. So Mari made one, which is gorgeous. It's um, grays and blacks. And uh, I think Rebecca, you're making one too, aren't you? 
Yeah, so sport or DK weight yarn. So my yarn is more like a fingering weight yarn and I have 400 yards of it based on my calculations three years ago, which is probably not that accurate because I didn't know a lot about measuring my yarn and doing all that and I didn't bother re recalculating it for now. So I can't remember what the yarn, what the needle weight is that this calls for. I feel like it calls for a five millimeter. Is that right, you guys? Anyways, I'm using 3.5s. So I'm going to try it on um, eventually. Um, I could even probably do it right now. Oh no, it, my head doesn't fit through. I'm going to try it on, but I'm going to keep knitting um, until I run out of yarn. So the bottom um, down here, I'll just keep knitting until I get to a point where it's like, yeah, it's sort of about time to start um, the garter stitch border. And I'll just knit till till the end. And it will give me kind of like more of like, um, like a, a thick kind of um, cowl instead of being um, quite so, it'll just be thicker. Um, Mari used 200 yards and she knit hers in worsted and it was also Targi from Katrina. There's a theme here, you guys. Um, and Rebecca, I don't think your size would matter in the slightest. Pick your own gauge that would work by, it's all by measurement. Yes, mine is from the color study. That's right, and she just finished hers. So yeah, I totally agree with Rebecca. Like I think because it's all done on, on um, measurements, you can kind of knit till you're done. Um, but I am gonna make mine a little bit longer so that I can maximize my yarn as much as possible. So um, yeah, Becca used sport weight and she knitted on three and a half millimeter needles. So it's like one of those really adaptable patterns, which makes it great for hand spun. And like, this is one of my very first yarns and I was a little bit nervous about doing stockinette in my first, one of my first yarns. But like you guys can see, this yarn is by no means even and consistent. It is, it is thick and thin. And look at how even my stitches are. It's pretty good um, for, for beginner yarn. Cause I came to sp I came back to spinning with very little knowledge after spinning so many years just doing singles and not knowing how to ply. Um, that's pretty good. So um, it's amazing how these patterns, um, how your stitches do even out, um, even, you know. So yeah, we'll see. I'm hoping that this will be done next time I talk to you, but we'll see. Um, we're uh, taking it one day at a time right now, so we'll uh, we'll see if this gets done. That is that. Um, you can keep going to mine is quite a bit bigger. I used like 600 yards and it sort of turns into a front heavy poncho. Oh, that's great to know. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, oh, Chris, I bought Targi from Katrina too. There's a theme here, you guys, about, about uh, Katrina and her uh, Targi. <laughs> I don't think that's anything else that I need to show you that is uh, needing this camera. So I am actually going to turn off this camera and you just have to bear with me for a minute. Um, because we are going to switch to just this camera so that I can show you this in the back. And we may have to play around a little bit so that, um, um, so that, um, I can show, show you this whole thing because it's absolutely massive. So, uh, let's see if I can move my chair out of the way. Charlie, stop. Hey, hey. Oh, no. I'm going to have to go, um... We will talk about the blanket next show. Um, I'm gonna have to cut the show here. I'm really sorry, you guys. This was coming at the end of the show um, and um, I'm unfortunately gonna have to stop the show now. Um, what I was gonna, uh, the housekeeping that I was saving for the end of the show is that um, we have news on Charlie. He's at my feet and he's been licking the whole time that we've been, that I've been podcasting. Um, this is really painful and very difficult to talk about, so I am not going to field questions in the um, live chat about Charlie or about what's going on. Um, but we have um, found out that um, Charlie is not long for this world. Um, we probably have about two weeks with him and we're maximizing that time as much as we can um, and unfortunately because he's been licking the whole time through the show and I wasn't able to stop him with my feet um, he's now bled all over the carpet so I just I need to obviously go and deal with that um, he has a tumor at the back of his mouth it's ruptured a week ago and it's continued to um, be a problem um, he is now palliative and um, our family is sort of dealing on a on a day-to-day -day basis with him and, and helping to support him as best we can day-to-day. -day. Um, so 
I don't know if there will be a show later this month. Um, like I said, we're kind of day to day. And if there isn't a show, I actually am really lucky to have had a conversation with Rebecca and Eve. Um, and that will be aired and released um, in lieu of um, because we had a really great conversation and, and I'm excited to share that with you. So instead of saving that for May, um, that'll come out in a couple weeks if there's no show. So um, for those um, who are patron subscribers and are w wondering about where the live stream is and when it's happening and whatnot, there is one currently scheduled for two weeks from today. Um, and I will post on Patreon and let you guys know if that show is a go. And um, at this point, I can say um, that I'm 98% sure that we won't be having a show in two weeks. So um, I thank you all so, so much for your kind comments and reaching out and for um, 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 just your, your kindness. I know there's a lot of animal lovers in the um, community and um, your, your kind words mean a lot. And I know that there's lots of people praying for Charlie and praying for our family. And I really appreciate that as well. Um, but now I need to go deal with Charlie and with his, uh, um, with what's going on with him. So I really wish you all a really happy week and some, a happy spinning adventure um, over the next couple of weeks if I don't talk to you. And I will absolutely share my wall hanging with you next show, whether that's in two weeks or at the beginning of May. I'm really excited to share that with you and um, we'll do that at that time. So um, have a wonderful, wonderful week and happy spinning. Thanks everyone for tuning in today. I'm sorry to have to cut the show, but um, I know that you all understand. So thank you so much. And I will talk to you next time. Bye, everyone.